Brian May has joined us, as you can probably hear. We're going to talk see. about something else, but he just mentioned we were just talking about Bohemian Rhapsody, the movie, has taken over a billion dollars. I mean, that must be, I mean, it's by far the most successful mm. biopic, rock pick, whatever you want to call it, of all time. I mean, absolutely extraordinary numbers. But it's not just music, of course, that he focuses on because he's one of those campaigners calling for the end to the controversial badger culling programme. Now, culling badgers is designed to stop the spread of tuberculosis to cattle. Uh, and the cull means this year we could see up to 63,000 badgers slaughtered. Well, the move has sparked anger with campaigners uh, like Brian who claim that culling is not only inhumane but also ineffective. So, uh, we are joined by Brian May, but also uh, live in Herefordshire is a farmer who just wants to be known by the name Martin. So, very good morning to you both. Uh, Martin, you back something which Brian is absolutely dead set against. He says uh, it's not going to work, it's not going to have the intended effects. Give us the reasons why you back such a massive cull of animals that, you know, frankly, lots of people quite like. Well, good morning to you all. Um, the reason I backed it is because I feel it would be nice that... Uh, to have a, a population of badgers that are healthy. Uh, uh, I don't disagree with a badger population at all. I think they're the most beautiful animals in the world. However, uh, a sickly population isn't helping anyone, in particular dairy and cattle farmers. I was a, a cattle farmer. I'm not anymore due to TB. In 2009, we had a, quite a large breakdown and unfortunately lost a lot of animals. And, um, it subsequently meant that it was untenable for me to be a cattle farmer anymore. And do you blame uh, the badgers? Apart from the emotional stress. Do, do you blame the badgers? Uh, I do, yeah, I do. I do, yes, I do, unfortunately. Um, I know Brian probably has a different opinion on that. Uh, do you have any proof? But I, I do think it was badgers that were involved <laughs> well, in that, he's saying, well, in that what's saying, What Brian's saying there so, is, do you actually have any proof that it was the badgers that caused your issue? Well, we... Through removal of badgers the incidence was reduced and the badgers were a major part of our tb breakdown mm. without right. doubt okay. all right brian your response well i would say there's no proof whatsoever um, we've had a badger cull now for six years and the the incidence of tb in some of the original uh, pilot uh, zones is actually increased. There's 130 percent in Gloucestershire. I mean, do you really think that the badger cull is working when you see those kind of figures? Um, I that's, have three points to make. That's really, right, but the Gloucestershire figure, I think, is a bit skewed. You know what? It's all skewed. And the, the, Gloucestershire... the, the outgoing uh, chief scientific advisor to the government said just the other day that actually you can't believe any of this. There is no proof that the badger cull is working. All these ups and downs are very insignificant because you don't know what the other factors are influencing them. My point is, I would, I but agree with you. Brian, I agree. With, I'm sorry. I agree Brian, with you that um, some. If you look at our, if you look at Ireland and Australia and New Zealand, they've uh, attained TB-free status through culling, no, and unfortunately, it's, this, this is it's one of the, the best method possible at the moment. No, you know, this would all be, you know, this is all about beliefs, and it's not so long since uh, farmers like, you know. British farmers would have believed that, that witches were responsible for, for uh, you know, the, the failure of their crops or whatever. Um, and so if you believe that, of course you would be it. burning... We don't need them. Of course you... <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry? Good point. So we don't sorry. need witches. I think Martin's being very firm on the anti-witch. Yeah, well, I, I mean, it's not long since that was a belief. Yeah, the belief no, now that there has a belief... Yeah. But if We're Martin, but if him, Martin is a farmer, if <laughs> Martin is a farmer <laughs> who faces this potential devastation to his herd, <laughs> if there is a cull and the incidence of TB in the wake of that dramatically falls, it's is not he true. not entitled to think there is a connection between I have, culling look, of the badgers and the reduction of TB? I don't believe it is. And when I came into this, it was a bit of instinct. You know, I thought, you know, how, how can this be true? I'm now sitting here with the proof that it doesn't work. And I'm sitting here also with the proof uh, that we have a system which works without killing any wildlife whatsoever. I mean, I agree that something needs to be done. I'll take you what, up on but, that, Brian. but why would you keep on doing the same thing and expecting a different result? Different result. This is not working. We have plenty of proof, and we have proof of why. It's because the current strategy is 
test the cows uh, with a skin test, which is incredibly unreliable, remove them, and then you expect to, to clean up the herd. What's happened is that test hasn't done its job because it's incredibly unreliable. Martin, Martin, let me ask you, why don't we know this? I mean, both of you are taking positions that you're both right. You can't both be right. Or perhaps it's such a murky uh, method of testing, a method of, of scientifically examining this, that we don't really know the answer. I mean, you can't both be correct I agree. I agree with Brian in that the, the testing method is flawed. Uh, I don't think it's... Uh, I wouldn't say it's not fit for purpose, but I would say it needs considerable input from government or, or a body to increase the uh, precision of that test. You know, um, in the, in the, the circles... The test on farm... OK. ..is quite frustrating. As a farmer, it's very when you're I mean... waiting for a test result, hmm. it, it is very frustrating when you know full well that a portion of the animals that are deemed to be reactive aren't come back with clean I mean, what, results... What you're, when both say, you're, shared, you're, you're both shared, it seems to me, by, you both love badgers, right? Mm. I don't know anyone who hates badgers, right? So <laughs> let's start from a position that badgers are beautiful animals and that a very large number are currently being wiped out through this culling year after year after year. I'm not convinced, Martin, I'm not... Listen, I'm not an expert in this, but I'm not convinced that you're certain that can the I culling you, of the badgers is actually um, working. Can I, put, can I put this to you? Can what, I put this to you, Martin? I can I just of? say this as, as a possibility? You think it's the badgers that... that, that brought the, the infection to your herd. I put it to you that the skin test is so inaccurate Indeed. that what you're doing is taking out many healthy animals from your herd. What's worse is you're leaving the infected Indeed. animal in the herd, which will then spread the disease, and then you get your next okay, breakdown. OK, let Martin respond to that. We have proof of this. We well, have proof through, because through we have the... found TB in Brian, cattle... Brian, let him respond, through the a delay. Testing, through the testing... Um, the testing becomes more regular, as you're aware, once the, a reactor has been found in a herd. And through that testing, it's quite rigorous, as is the scale of the testing. The, the, the prescription for reaction becomes tighter once a, mm. a herd has failed. So... But you're talking with the about serial failures of a herd. The current... I'm, I'm oh, saying... indeed, indeed. And in, in certain areas of the country, there are... Poor farmers have gone through it year on year yeah, on year. And can I say one more thing? failure of a herd. Okay, but okay. Martin, so... Martin, sorry, can I just... <laughs> earlier in the interview, you mentioned three countries which are now TB-free uh, when it comes to free. herds, right? That's right. Now, and what do you put that down to? That's right. The coal. Yeah, this well, is... In Ireland, in the Republic of Ireland since 2008, it's on a, a website, uh, TB Free England, if you'd like to look it up, uh, they had 30,000 reactive cattle in... 2008, and by 2015, that had reduced by 50% through a culling programme. Now, that, to me, is fairly conclusive mm. that a culling programme will work, as it did in Australia with the indigenous animals that were creating the problem okay. over there. OK, OK. So, it's difficult to say I don't that believe it doesn't work. I don't believe your data there is, is accurate. I don't want to go into it. I'm going to say one thing. Gatcom. We work with a farmer in the West okay. Country... Uh, Robert Reed, who runs the Gatcombe farm. He was a serially uh, compromised farm. He was unable to trade. He was a, he was a constantly broken-down yeah. farm because he, he suffered... Um, yeah. So much day, TB. Year after year, he suffered from TB and wasn't able to trade. Within three years, with the scheme that we put together with Dick Sibley, he is now TB-free. We didn't kill a single badger. We know the badgers are infected. Of course they are, because they're... they're they're eating bits of slurry that's being pumped out of the, of, of the slurry pit. We just pit. don't believe they're affecting the, but, the cows. But we were able to clear up the, the, the cows without, without okay. even touching It seems the to badgers. me the one thing you both agreed about, apart from a love of badgers and beautiful creatures, is the testing that's going on simply isn't good enough. Mm. And it would seem to me the one point of consensus no. you could both probably reach is we need better testing. It shouldn't be that this can be such an arguable point after six years of culling as to whether it's even being genuinely effective, no, right? Sh surely, if there was any doubt but whatsoever that the badger been... cull was working, surely you wouldn't be licensing more killing. You would be looking at alternative methods. We have the alternative methods now. I'm not making this up. This is the truth. We have a method, the Gatkin Protocol, which works. It can save British farming. Well, the but alternative what, methods, what needs though, Brian, to be... are very limited. They're not limited. 
they can be applied to any farm. And I would challenge you. I wish you had cows and we could visit you. You don't have cows anymore. But if you had cows, I would say we will come down there and we will clean up your farm without killing a single badger. OK, chaps, we've got to leave it there. It's a fascinating debate, but a lot of farming people watching this who will have, I'm sure, views on both sides. Uh, Brian, great to see your passion for this. You know, nobody wants to kill beautiful animals like badgers unnecessarily. It seems to me the testing at the moment is deeply flawed, mm. and as a result, no. decisions are being taken which may or may not be correct, and that has got to change. Martin, thank you very much. Mm. Brian, thank mm -hmm. you very much indeed. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you very much.